special edition of the Classics Capsule with me, Sean McKeon. And as you can see, we have actually come out and about to play today. We're not in the usual confines. Uh, we're in a very, very special place with a very special guest uh, whose voice may well be familiar to the people of Merseyside, if not his face. It is none other than Mr. Paul Salt. All right. <laughs> uh, I believe you are a fan of Back to the Future. Well, yeah, it's my, it's my favourite film, yeah. Um, it's one of those probably where I could bore you with most of the script. I've probably seen it, I reckon, above a hundred times. Um, it was one of those films that, you know, you watch as a kid. I mean, when it came out, I was, what, nine? Uh, you watch as a kid, and then you watch it again and again. You know, the first time it came on the telly, which was, I think, Christmas a couple of years after it was out, but we, we taped it and wore the, wore the video <laughs> out. Um, and then it was a, it was a big kind of wait really until the sequel because the sequel didn't come out I think four years years four years after the original uh, and then the 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 third one in the trilogy came out a year after the sequel so we were spoiled then Uh, number two and number three came out quite quickly but I just love them whether it's a bit of escapism I don't don't know what it is but you know I I just think that I love Michael J Fox anyway I think he's absolutely brilliant um, and the, the story and everything about them, I just, I just think they're fantastic. You know, came very close to Michael J. Fox not being in it. I do indeed, yeah. There was another guy whose name... Eric Stoltz. Eric Stoltz, that's it, who was cast as Marty, and they filmed quite a few of, uh, of, of the scenes with him, uh, and I think they realised it wasn't... It, he, he was given a very good dramatic performance, but not a comedy one. Yeah. And he realised himself at the same time that he wasn't right, and they decided between the him and the producers, it was a mutual thing that he'd stepped down. Well, of course, Michael J. Fox was in Family Ties yes. at the time, wasn't he? Um, which was hugely popular in, in the States in particular. And um, I know that they, they then went to get Michael J. Fox. Um, and the problem was he was so committed to that that it was going to be difficult to fit him in. So they were filming at all it ridiculous it, it, times. You know, what yeah, what Michael um, J. Fox was doing. Um, but it worked, that's the main thing. I mean, it would seem, obviously, it would seem weird now for anyone else to, to do it. Although I have seen, I think there's, there's a few rushes, isn't there, of, is, yeah. um, of Eric Stoltz doing it. And yeah. it, just, it just looks a bit odd, really. But I just think Michael, Michael J. Fox, even now, when you look at him, obviously, he's, he's got his illness and everything, but he, he's just one of these guys who doesn't age, really, isn't he? So that's why he was so good for the part. It's a bit like you, if you and nine went back to the future, came. Well, I don't know about yeah. that, you know, but... You're uh, supposed to put oil you lay on your skin, not drink it, you know? <laughs> Um, but but yeah, he, 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 I, I love the film and Christopher Lloyd as well is is, is really good in it as well. You know, he wasn't the first choice for Top Brown. Oh right, go on. I didn't know that one. No. John Lithgow. Right, right. I mean, he, he, John Lithgow wasn't available. He, he was committed to doing other things. And Christopher Lloyd, when he got the script, he flatly refused to read it to start off. It was his wife persuading right to read the script. Right. And once he'd read it, he thought, yeah. I, I like this. Yeah, yeah. that's how they, they, they actually got the cast. But well, I mean, there was there was quite a few. I think there was quite a few issues, wasn't there, with the guy who played his dad, um, George McFly. I think he had a dispute after the first, after the first one, yeah. one, and he do, he doesn't appear in the second or third, apart from I think his stunt doubles, basically body yes. doubles, whatever you want to call it, uh, because of some contractual Is it, dispute. He, he was offered a quarter of the salary of all the other returning actors. Yeah. And he said, no, you pay me the same amount as everybody else is getting for coming back, but I'm not coming back. I um, played really, I mean, he'd be, I mean, I, I, one of the main characters in the first film, so why? He was, yeah. Why it, was he was quite good at it as well. Yeah, I thought he was really good, yeah. yeah. Um, and, and then, you know, the, I mean, the, 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 that's the good thing about the film as well, obviously, it's mainly, it's Marty and Doc, but the characters kind of on the outside as well, on the periphery, are also brilliant, like yeah. you know, Biff Tannen. It's just you know your sort of classic kind of movie villain, isn't he? Really, the, the scene, the scene with the manure, um, you know, manure. I hate manure, and then they do it again in the the, the sequel, don't they? Like, in both of them. Uh, yeah, it's just, and the, I love that as well. That the, 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 there's a common there's sort a, of the, theme. Just to be repeated. Yeah, over and running, over again. running through through all of them. And I remember, I remember sitting in the cinema watching Back to the Future Two, and uh, when they went back to the alternate. 1985. Obviously, that that was in 1989. Yeah, I was I was 13 then. So when they went back to the alternate 1985, it actually took me a while to get my head around what had happened. 
But when you look at, at Biff's palace and the high rise building and all that, it's it's remarkably Donald Trump. I was just gonna say it's it's Donald really Trump. is it's frighteningly <laughs> Donald Trump. Uh, it, 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 I mean, you know, it, even the way he looks, the way Biff looks, with the kind of you know, his the hair and everything about it is and I, that make that's when you start thinking this is this is a bit scary. They really did know what was gonna happen in the future, maybe. <laughs> But it, it's a shame the second film, really, the plot is just everywhere. It, it's it's yeah. the, the the charm of the first one. It's yeah, it's about time traveling. You'd expect it to be confusing, but it isn't. It's just a simple story of going from the start of the film to the end of it. Yeah. The second one goes all over. The well, the second one. I mean, I really like the second one. As I mean, some people slag it off. Other people say it's the best one of the three. I'm kind of in the middle. I really like it, but for me, the original. Will always be the best one, but when you look at, I mean, they they, they obviously start out in 1985. They go forward to 2015. They go back to the ultimate alternate 1985, and then they go back again to, 19, to 1955, 55. and they're already there in 1955 because obviously they've already been back. Um, so the space time continuum went a bit, a bit haywire maybe. But I, I I think the second one, some people slate it. I mean, if you go if you go into the future, you know. It's always going to be, you've got to make it a bit far-fetched, haven't you? I mean, one of the things that I picked up on when I watched the films again to do my sort of standalone thing was a massive plot hole in the second one. Yeah, there's been a few of them. Well, which was, was the one you picked up How on? does the old Biff Tanner know how to operate the time machine yeah. to go back? He's never been shown how to use it. No, but he could just no. get in it and then just... Go yeah. to 1955 in it, and then go back to 2015. Well, yeah. like, I mean, he knows he knows he's got to get up to 88 miles an hour. Because sure, no, he, no, he doesn't. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. How does he know? He, 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 he would that's probably have. Um, he he would have probably got up to I don't know 50 or 60, <laughs> and then gone. Well, this ain't working. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably have pulled over and thought, well, I don't know how they did that. But, um, yeah, because cool. I mean, no one would really carry on up to 88, would they? Really. Yeah, so that, that is a good point. Um, I think there's a few other other flaws as well. I've read around it down the... I can't remember what any of them are off the top of my head, but... Do you know why they went to 1955? Do you know why they went to well, 1955? He, he, they put they, they put that in the, the time machine because it was an anniversary of when Doc slipped and banged his head. That's how he So he was doing something in the bathroom, he slipped, banged his head, and it was that day, and when he banged his head, that's how he that, came up with the idea of the time travel. The flux capacitor. The flux capacitor and all that, you see. No, yeah. it was because that was the date of the atomic bomb, that the original that, that the, way oh, for him to I come did. back. Do you know that back. one? Right. Sean, do you know that story? In yeah. the narrative, though, it was because... The well, the film yeah. is because he, he the, banged his the, head. The original yeah. idea to get back, because it was the, the thing's nuclear-powered, the main reason why they went back to 1955 was the nuclear tests. Right, right, okay. And the original idea was that they were going to have to get the power from one of the nuclear tests into the DeLorean to get to, to get back to, to 1985. Power. And the budget wouldn't stand it. Right. So they scrapped the whole idea and now to come with, like, how are we going to do it? it yeah. Like, we use the bolt of lightning, but that's got the same amount of power. I mean, that, 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 that was quite, I, I quite like that. I think that's quite good. What I think is absolute nonsense, my only real quibble with the Back to the Future tri trilogy, and, you know, I, as I said, my favourite film, is the steam thing at the end. <laughs> when Doc goes, returns to 1985 with Mary... Steve Burton, um, who plays Clara, and they come back and he's got kids and he's like, I, I runs on steam and it appears on the, the railway track and you're like, come on. <laughs> uh, that, to me, that that is that is nonsense. Um, Where do you stand on the possibility of a fourth one? Absolutely no way. I don't think you should do it. I don't think you should do it. I think too much too much time has gone by. If you pardon the pun. Um, to to eat to revisit. I just think it'd be naff. I just think it'd be naff. I think when I mean, and this goes for film and television. When really, you can probably name on one hand anything that's been bought back and has been as good, if not better. And I just think if they bought it back, I, I, you know, they're all obviously a lot older. I mean, I don't know how they'd do it. Don't know how they'd do it. I don't. I don't think it would work. I mean, you look at. 
they brought Eddie Fool's Noses back, and that was terrible when they brought that back. And that's another, that's one of my favourite TV shows. But when they they should have left it when they were millionaires, that should have been. But I think they're talking about recasting it, aren't they? This is uh, this is something a bit controversial now. I actually can't stand Eddie Fool's Noses. See, that is controversial. Mm. That is very controversial. Um, for me, it's in me. I'd say it's in my top five comedies of all time. But that's the beauty of things like Faulty Towers. I don't know where do you where do you start oh, on Faulty Towers? Yeah, now Faulty Towers is genius, and it's another one of them. You watch them over and over and over yeah. again. But they were Faulty Towers. There's only twelve made, and that makes it better. Yeah. If they made I don't know six series or something like that, it would have diluted the quality, and it wouldn't have been. It wouldn't have been anywhere near as good. It wouldn't have been as good. That's why it, that's why it worked. Yeah. So I think I do think you have to be really careful. And then John Cleese is, you know, sort of always poo pooed ever bringing Faulty Towers back again. Although he, there was a rumour there was a lost episode, which he's also mm. yeah, he's also denied to have knowledge of. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But you've so. he, he, he said something there which is quite interesting about things are very rarely as good when they're resurrected. Yeah. Now there's one thing that I can think of straight away that I know you despise. Go on. Doctor Who. Yeah. Well, I, don't, no, I just don't like it. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but, I mean, it's, it's unusual because, like, Back to the Future, mm. you have to be a bit of a nerd and a bit of a geek to like Back to the Future. Thanks. Um, <laughs> I, I like Back to the Future as yeah. well, so. But you have to be a bit of a nerd and a bit of a geek to like Doctor Who as well. And it, it, but you it, can be a nerd and a geek like in one thing and not the, the other, can't you? Uh, I, uh, to me, the big thing with Doctor Who, it all started when I was a kid, and I, I hated the Daleks, and I really, really didn't, you know, I, I actually was a bit scared of the Daleks when I was a, when I was a kid, and then as time has gone on, I've, you know, I may, might have caught bits of an episode, which is not this, it's not for me, it's not, not nonsense, I don't know, it's because, I mean, couldn't, couldn't they have just scrapped it, <laughs> well, why did they have to bring it back? They did. And everyone goes mad about it on Christmas Day, and it's on. And you know, you look at the schedule, you look at the radio times. You go, oh, Doctor Who's on. Play, play chess with my little boy. <laughs> um, In fairness, you were. I think you're one of the the ones they call the lost generation for Doctor Who. Because when you were of the age when you would have been getting into it, like nine, ten years old, was when the BBC started basically losing interest in making it. Yeah. And started messing around in the schedule and be made the cardinal sin of casting Sylvester McCoy. Yeah, I mean, I know there's been uh, there was a bit of controversy about that, but I, I mean, I don't like Star Trek. <laughs> I'm with you on that. Uh, I absolutely, do. I used to I used to share a flat uh, many years ago with a mate of mine called Dave, who was a mad Star Trek fan. So whenever you know the telly was on, he was watching Star Trek. It used to drive me bonkers because again. I okay. always think every episode of Star Trek's the same. Because the, the, the 45 <laughs> minutes long and you get five minutes setting an episode up. Yeah. Then you get about 35 minutes where they do absolutely nothing. Mm. And then you get five minutes where it's just explanations are all crammed into the five minutes where mm. everybody's all happy and then the Enterprise flies off to another planet. See? Nonsense. And every planet in the original series all looks the same. The scenery was all identical. He just used to paint it a different colour. <laughs> I don't mind Star Wars. Star Wars is okay. Are you a Star Wars fan? Yes and no. Right. Mm. The, uh, I, in, in, to qualify that, Star Wars, the original three, I loved. The prequels are nonsense. I mean, you know, Jar Jar Binks, what the hell? Um, so I don't, I, I'm not. I've, I've, I've seen the prequels. I would never. I can say hand on heart, I would never watch any of them again, mm -hmm. as long as I just, no way. The original three great. Thought the Force Awakens was brilliant. Thought the last one, what was that called? I can't remember. Was called the last one they just done. I didn't like that. The one. Last Jedi. That's the, last the one. Jedi. I didn't like the Last Jedi. Up and down was right, man. But I do, you know. I actually think The Last Jedi was the best one since oh. Empire Strikes Back. Oh, I thought The Force Awakens was superb. It was a remake of the first one. I know, but that's what made it great. The only good thing about it was they killed Han Solo off. Oh, no, I didn't. Well, that was a, gen that was a genuine. Mm. I remember being in the cinema. I went on my own because no one would go with me. Um, and I remember being in the cinema and going, oh my god, they've killed Han Solo. And to, that was one of those moments where you. Because I didn't know about it. So I, I actually thought the minute Harrison Ford appears, it's like when you're watching a horror film and you see a priest 
Yeah. And the priest might as well have a sign over his head saying, I'm going to die before the end of this film. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, I well, it shot me. It's pretty maybe obvious I'm... what's going to happen to oh, Han well, Solo. I didn't know, I didn't know. <laughs> He's the Obi-Wan Kenobi in the film. He's got to die for the film to win. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't realise. Sacrilege. Thought, I thought it was but, good. Uh, I thought it was good. So I, I, I'm actually looking forward to doing Star Wars, like the Star Wars films, and I know it's going to be controversial when I do them, mm-hmm. because the first three, the first one especially, it still looks to this day it looks brilliant. Mm. But the plot is the biggest load of rubbish you've ever seen in your life. It probably got away with that because it looks so good. I think, you know, you know, they know the Millennium Falcon's being tracked when the escape from the Death Star. So what do they do? They fly right to the rebel planet yeah. and let the Death Star follow them. <laughs> and then when they attack the Death Star... You, you've, you've clearly read up on this a lot. I'm, I'm, I'm not as hot on this as, not uh, at all. as I need to be. Not at all. They attack the Death Star. They've got to fly down this little trench to fire the, the, the missiles into the little hole at the end of it. Yeah. First time you do it, three of the... The, the spaceships flying down, Vader flies in behind them, shoots the three of them down. Mm-hmm. A couple of seconds later, they do exactly the same thing again. Yeah, but you just got to get past all that, haven't you? you, know, you gotta, yeah, you get to... past it, man. Where's the common sense? Where's the, the strategy in life? Relax and enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, relax and enjoy it. <laughs> Tell them, Paul. We're talking, talking of things, I've actually thought of something that came back and was really good. Uh, it's a TV show. And it's one of my favourite TV shows, Alfida's Aim Pet. Now, oh. have you watched it? Yes. Yeah. Now, the first series that they did was obviously in Germany. That was brilliant. I mean, some of the acting and the sets were a bit dodgy. Um, but it was really, really good. The second series that they did, which was in uh, Marbella uh, and also in Derbyshire when they were renovating the, the stately home, was, was still good, but wasn't perhaps as good. And then they had the long break, you know, for uh, must be 10, 15 years where they didn't. Uh, didn't make it, and then they bought it back on the BBC. Jimmy Nail had lost about 12 stone, um, but it was really, really good. It was really, re- really, really well done. So I'm, I'm, I'm putting that one as something they bought so back, which was the, the thing I, the, that I find funny about was the one in that when they dismantled the Newcastle Transporter Bridge. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And took it to America. Yeah. And the effects were so realistic when he did it. The BBC got complaints that they'd actually they did, dismantled they, the, the, the bridge, yeah. <laughs> and they had to, the, the last episode, they had to put a disclaimer <laughs> on the end of the last episode saying the transporter bridge is actually still in Newcastle, we haven't touched it. Yeah. People genuinely thought that the BBC had dismantled this huge great big landmark and took it to America for the sake of a television program. <laughs> I think what is great about that show, the original show, when, you know, it was, I think it was 1982 it came came out or there, there or thereabouts and it was it was a reflection of what was happening happening was, in, yes. in sort of Thatcher's Britain at the time in that people couldn't get work and they were you know they were heading over to places like it was Dusseldorf wasn't yes. it we, to you know to work on sites over there and it was a Scouser, a Brummy, a Cockney, a Geordie, well a few Geordies. It would have been so much better if they'd have got an actual Scouser to play. Well obviously uh, yeah Christopher Fairbank it wasn't the greatest <laughs> in the world, but again, I have to I just look past that and you know the, the, the kind of moxy uh, sort of thing. But it it was real, wasn't it? It was it was it was what was going on at the time, and um, I'm sure there was lads who probably thought God, this is a bit close to to the truth. I mean, some of the humour in it now, though, you wouldn't get away with it. No, 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 no. So but the, the the wonderful line from Oz when it was one of the first episodes when in Germany and he says it's ironic you know us coming over here building these houses it was our lot we came over and flattened them ourselves mm. in the fort. Yeah <laughs> yeah. There's also for there's also um an inconsistency in the first series. If you watch the first series back, um, there's an episode where Sunderland, Sunderland Football Club, are playing a, a game in Germany and Oz goes to watch Sunderland play this this game. Um, and it's kind of made out that he's a Sunderland fan, but he, he's, he's a Newcastle he's fan, Newcastle, yeah. and there is no way a Newcastle fan would ever go and watch Sunderland. No, There's just no way. So if anyone watches it back, the first series, you'll see that that's a bit of a bit of a continuity error, a bit of a blunder going on there. Well, we can forgive the odd one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I mean, as a Doctor Who fan, there's continuity errors. Well, every single episode. Timey wimey. <laughs> 
you know, when I beat you to your feet or something, you don't walk down corridors and the walls are going like this all around and like you're getting dropped to do as well. So I, I think that's straight out of the crossroads manual of uh, oh, television <laughs> sets, isn't it? <laughs> there is a wonderful episode of one of the stories John Pertwee did towards the end of his time. And he's in this underground bunker and he, he's being sort of sent on this down these corridors, the remote control shutting these doors. And as the doors are sliding down, you can see the walls are nearly falling down as the doors are coming down <laughs> and around. <laughs> Wobbly sets, they were kind of they were a staple of the 80s, weren't they? Definitely, you know, um, with crossroads. You look at neighbours and a lot of the Aussie soaps, the sets were well ropey. What was the, the, the one I used to watch within these walls? Probably too young to remember, I don't remember that. But that used to do exactly the same right. thing. On prisoner cell block H. Yeah, prisoner. Oh, I love that. That was that was hugely popular though. It really was. I remember when they axed it. There was yeah, protests. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It's funny that the, the cheesier they are, yeah, the more people tend to love them. He used to give me roses. <laughs> Being tuned. <laughs> Mind you, in terms of cheesiness, you'll never beat Blake Seven. Again, I, I never watched that. I never watched that. Oh my God! God Blake Seven. <laughs> the, the, the things used to go wrong and be transmitted. Right. Like set, the set used to fall apart. Rather than edit it out. And and rather than edit it out or retake it. They just used to carry on. Well, it's probably A, because it was such a pain to edit back in those days, and B, if they're on time mm. restrictions, it's like a lot of soaps now, they can't afford to get things wrong because they haven't got time to reshoot. Because yeah. um, mm. there's about you know, there's six the, episodes. Of there's there's one that always sticks in my mind. It's like the, the Blake and one of the other crew transport over to this little thing. And there's no air in it. And there's like support controls, there's like these slide controls, and Gareth Thomas goes over and just sweeps these things across. Yeah. And when they hit the end of the, the runner, every single one of them all snap and go flying across the studio floor, and you see it and you hear them land. Wow. And the two of them stop and look. And they just carry on with the scene as though absolutely nothing's happened yeah. whatsoever. Carry on regardless. And you just sit there and think, it's just like, why didn't you stop and go back and redo that bit? You know, it would have taken like five it. or ten seconds to go back, but no, it's like, I'll oh, just carry on. Yeah. Is yeah. It like, you know, so what? No one will notice. <laughs> just, you know, the amount of money that they spent on the models and whatever else. But now you look at television now, and television is like really high budget, isn't it? And, you know, like the amount of, with, with Netflix and mm. Amazon Prime and all that, and the BBC. You know, there's a lot of like Line of Duty, mm -hmm. Killing Eve, mm -hmm. Luther, all of those kind of shows. They're sort of like probably on not far off movie budget. Some of them because of, of yeah. the high production values they've they've, they've got, and I think it's because of Netflix. Uh, they've, they've had to. I remember in 2005 when Doctor Who came back on, and the BBC made a big thing because it used to be the cheapest drama they made, and when it came back. It was the most expensive drama that yeah. they made in its history. Yeah. And he said, this has got to work, because if it doesn't, basically the corporation is bankrupt. We've blown the budget. We've basically yeah. blown the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, but uh, it's been a very different edition of the Classics Capsule list, but well, it's been quite yeah. an entertaining one. I am nothing if not different. I <laughs> didn't even talk about football once, which, you know. It's unusual for me, so there you go. No, but I mean, I'm an ethical fan and you're not normal, so. There we go. <laughs> we'll leave it there. <laughs> well, thank you very much for your time. Cheers, thank you. And we'll see you next time in the Classics Capsule. Thanks very much.